Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Boaz Zinnemann. I'm a technical evangelist with AWS. And welcome to our session about language barriers and AI. And I would like to start this session with a short uh, question. Who speaks English in the crowd? Who speaks Portuguese? Nice. French? German? Good. Russian? Japanese? Nobody? Kind of? Chinese? Korean? OK, let's stop here. So as you can see, we have many different languages people, people are speaking in this audience. And there are several areas where artificial intelligence comes to our help with language challenges. And today, we can use Network Language Processing, or NLP, to provide you services like automatic speech recognition, understanding parts of sentences. We can do natural language understanding, actually converting text into something we can understand and act upon. We can do text to speech. And Ian was talking about it in the previous session a bit. I'm going to show you some additional examples. And of course, we can do translation. And one of the main reasons we see a huge change in the area in the last few years is this graph. If several years ago, the accuracy of NLP was around 70%. And this is not good enough to provide good services or good user experience. And today, we are at about 90% accuracy. And this makes this technology mature enough to provide you real services, real value for your applications, for something you can build for your own business. And we can see that a lot with our Alexa services. And just take Alexa as an example. A device that can listen to what you're saying, take, your, <coughs> take the voice, understand it, and carry actions based on what you're saying to this device. And today with Alexa, we see this expanding all over the world with more and more skills developers are developing on a daily basis. Actually, there are more than 40,000 skills on the Alexa platform today, and this number is growing rapidly, and we see more and more applications and skills being added to Alexa in all different languages and all different types of skills. But how can we, as developers, and many of us building small companies, small startups, enjoy this revolution. How can we add this capability to our products in an easy way? And for that, I want to talk about the advantages of integrating language skills into your applications. And we see it with many different use cases. A lot of our customers are building education software using artificial intelligence and using language, language skills. We do knowledge management and chatbots and customer service and digital assistance like Alexa and many, many others. And there are many tools we can build today with voice capabilities and language capabilities. And I don't know if you've been to the previous session, but Ian was talking about our AI services for developers. And out of the, ser the seven services we provide today, five of them are exactly to solve language challenges. And this is what I want to talk about today. How do we take those services and use them in my application to build additional capabilities, to expand my service to new markets, to new customers that are not tied to the language I speak, I understand, or people from two sides of the service can talk to each other. So we're going to talk about the different services. We're going to show some use cases and do some cool demos. So make sure your phones are ready. We're going to have some fun later on. And let's start with the first one and talk a bit about Amazon Polly. So Amazon Polly is our deep learning based text to speech, <coughs> text -to -speech service. And it allows you to take a very simple text from one side, send it to Polly, and get a voice file on the other end, like this example. Today in Seattle, Washington, it's 11 degrees Fahrenheit. OK, so I sent today in Seattle WA, it's 11 circle F, right? This is what's written over there. And Polly took this and translated it into voice. When 
Polly understand that WA is Washington, it, and 11 circle F, it's 11 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is very simple to use. It's supported by 52 different voices across 25 languages. And just to explain to you why we have 52 voices and only 25 languages, this is another example in English. Today, in Mumbai, India, it's 32 degrees Celsius. OK, this is still English, but this is Indian English. And if you want to do a completely different language, Esta é a minha segunda visita ao Novo Summit Lisboa. OK, where are the Portuguese guys in the audience? How was it? Good? OK, this is my second visit to Lisbon for those that does not speak Portuguese to Web Summit Lisbon. So this is just a very simple example. What we can see from Poly is several things. First of all, it's fully automatic. It's very accurate. It's, it can process any text you give it. It can be a word. It can be a sentence. It can be a very long text as well. It's very easy to understand. I'll just give you this example. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Who wants to repeat that? Nobody, right? Now, if you want to add semantic to your text, you can use a markup language called SSML. It will allow you to give some instructions to Polly how to pronounce a certain text. So in this case, I don't want Polly to say my name because it will say it Boaz, like always, like this is completely the wrong way to pronounce it. I wanted to spell it. The spelling of my name is B-O-A-C. So I gave an SSML command to say it first extra slow and then interrupt these characters. And Polly basically took the text and interrupted these characters and gave me the spelling. By the way, if I want Polly to say my name correctly, I can provide the phonetic pronunciation of my name, and it will actually do the phonetic pronunciation. And it's a pretty interesting thing to do with a name like mine. So this is one thing you can do with SSML. There are some additional examples like this one. Richard's number is 2,122,341,237. OK, good luck calling Richard with this one. But if I'm going to add interrupt as telephone. Richard's number is 2,12,234. One, two, three, seven. OK, you, you get the point. So adding another tag into Aptus Telephone will make Polly read it as a telephone number. It even know how to split it into those three, three, four, like we usually read out loud phone numbers. If this is not enough and 52 different voices, uh, it's something that you can't build your application with, we have something called voice modification. And this is basically changing the size of the speaker. As you might know, if the speaker is a very big guy like I am, there's a big voice. Small people have usually a smaller voice. And you can actually play with this size of the speaker using voice modification. This is Brian. This is Brian without any voice modifications. Imagine now that I got bigger. Suppose that I got even bigger still. Now let's go back and hear the effect when I go in the opposite direction. Can you tell that I'm getting smaller? So this is only now I'm even smaller than before. Yeah, I forgot the smaller guy. So this is only with minus 25. Just imagine minus 75, how it would look like, like he inhaled all the helium in the world. And this is something you can do and play with it. And people are actually using that to tell stories, to do audiobooks with Polly, because you can play with the same voice and have some different type, types of voices, basically with the same character. We have some great examples of customers using Poly for their implementations, like the Washington Post, allowing you to now to listen to articles instead of reading them. So if you are in the middle of a run, or you simply can't read from no matter what the reason, you can hit a button, and Washington Post will read it for you using Poly. They're basically using Poly to generate a voice a version of the textual post. Another great example is Mapbox that is using navigation system and creating those sound Head bites north on Broderick Street, using then turn left onto instead Page of Street. creating them manually turn right with, onto Baker Street. Uh, with the way they used to be bringing somebody and Street. record him in a studio. Another great example is a Japanese radio station. Anybody, nobody speaks Japanese, right? But a Japanese radio station that did public announcements using Poly and actually used it. Should start. No sound. Wait. So they were using emergency announcements automatically while other radio stations will not be able to operate because of a typhoon several years ago. So this was fully automated in Japanese. 
Poly is super simple to use as any of the services we're going to talk about today. So this is just one example. How do I use Poly to synthesize speech? And how do I play this file in a very simple file? So one line command, I'm getting an MP3 file and now I can play it. And this is something a bit more complex using SSML. So I'm creating a sentence with a lot of tags and a lot of SSML. You have to be really, really quiet to hear this one, but this is the outcome of the previous one. Here's my little secret. I can't move this. Okay, you know the quote, right? So this is what you can get with uh, applying a lot of SSML into a sentence and getting something that sounds really, really cool and really natural. So this was Polly, we'll get back to Polly later for some demos, but for now, let's move on. And let's m talk about Amazon Transcribe, which is the exact opposite. Amazon Transcribe takes speech and convert it into text. So I can have a voice file from one end and sending it to Amazon Subscribe, getting the text out of this, out of this sound file. And Amazon Transcribe can support multiple languages and it can even give you a recognition of the multiple speakers in case you have multiple speakers. It now can support different channels. So if you have somebody recorded on the right channel and another person on the left channel, this is something you do a lot of inter in interviews, it can actually detect those channels and find out that this is a different person. It can even support telephony audio, which is very low quality. That was a very important requirement from our customers to be able to transcribe phone calls. And actually, RingDNA is one of our customers that is using that. And RingDNA are a company providing call services. And one of the features they're providing today is to be able to transcribe automatically phone calls coming to the system and allow their customers to take a phone call, convert it into text, store it, analyze it, working with that, whatever you can think about uh, something like that. Of course, running artificial intelligence and other, <coughs> other services on top of that. And this is fully possible with Transcribe. How we used to do it, somebody was sitting, listening to calls, taking notes, transcribing manually. And now, by converting and doing it automatically with the service, they suddenly can transcribe much more content than they used to do. So moving on to Amazon Translate, translation engine. And basically, once again, I'm sending text in one language, one side and getting another language at the other side. It can support words, sentences, and full documents. So you can create a translation program that can take a full document and translate it for you. There are some very interesting features uh, for translate, and we're going to play with some of them in a few minutes. But first of all, it's a real-time translation. You're sending an API call, getting a result almost immediately. And we're going to do it live in a few seconds. It's powered by deep learning, and it can, uh, it, can, it can work with 12 different languages. It's not uh, language pairs anymore. It used to be only language pairs. Now we support translation from any to any language that we support right now. You're going to see the list in a second. And it can detect your language if you're not providing the source language. So you don't have to provide the source language. It can detect it automatically. I'm going to show you an example in a second. And as I said before, Using those services is super easy. So this is another example for Translate API. And in this case, I'm calling the AWS Translate and asking it to translate text, providing the text. This is, hello, what's up? We want to go to see a movie tonight. The source language is auto, and the target language is going to be PT, which is Portuguese. And the response that I'm going to get, I, can, I can't even read it, but this is in Portuguese. As you can see, I did not provide my source language. I just mentioned that this is auto detection, and the response will tell me that the source language in this case was English. This was an example using the CLI, the command line interface. Let's do an example in Python. So here's another example. This is actually all the languages we currently support, and we support, for most of them, we support directly between any language to any language. There are some exceptions, but generally, all of them can be translated from one to another. So in this case, I'm just defining the, the language pairs. And this is my API call. I'm calling the API translate text, providing the text, the source language, the target language, and printing it out. The output of this will be something like that. 
and as you can see, about 20 lines of code, and you have a Python program that can translate a sentence from English to any language, and I can actually expand it, translate it from any language to any language. If you want to get uh, the, co the code uh, in this example, all my examples are available on GitHub. You can see up here, uh, Zinnemann slash AWS translate. Just check my GitHub, and you can get all the examples, examples from there and play with them yourself. One of our customers using, tra using Translate is Hotels.com. As you might know, Hotels.com has 19 localized websites in 41 different languages, and they're using Translate today to expand their network even beyond that. Uh, they find it accurate enough to implement it as an automatic translation. And <clears throat> just to give you an example how it works uh, for a real website, so I have a website here that basically has my bio. And in addition to the bio, let me just get out of the presentation. It would be easier to show. So if I want to provide a local, localized version for my bio, I can just choose the Portuguese flag, and my entire website is going to be translated to Portuguese, or to Russian, or to Japanese. And I have no idea what's written here. I hope it's true but I checked it with several languages. It was pretty good. And this is something, and you can, as I said before, you can download the code. Uh, it's available out there. This is something that took me literally an hour and a half to write. It could, most of the time, dealing with it looked, the, the, that it will look nicer, and we, I have the flags and everything else out there. The translation portion of this is super, super simple. If you're looking. If you're looking for more advanced uh, examples, we're going to have another one in a few minutes. But feel free to play, to play with it. You can access this website. It's fully public. And you can get the code running it from my GitHub repository. Feel free to play with it. There are some changes you need to do to, to make it yours in terms of setting up the right account credentials and security so it can access your resources. Uh, there, are, there are instructions in GitHub how to do it. OK? We're going to play it with Translate. Uh, a bit more later on. So now I want to move on and talk about Comprehend. And Comprehend is one of the services that allow you to process text and get insights out of this text automatically. So for example, I have text coming from different sources. It can be social media. It can be web pages. It can be even text that was transcribed from phone calls or anything like that. I will send this text into Amazon Comprehend, and Amazon Comprehend in real time will give me insights like entities. What do I have in this text? Key phrases, the language of the text, and even sentiment. It will be able to tell me if this text is positive, neutral, uh, negative, or mixed, and all of this in real time. And this is one, <coughs> one feature of Amazon Comprehend. Another one called topic modeling. So imagine you have a huge pile of documents sitting somewhere in your organization. And you don't know anything about those documents. Like, they were saved for a very long period of time, and they from different people and different topics. And you want to get a catalog of those documents. By sending this, those documents to Comprehend, or basically telling Comprehend where the documents are stored, it will run a job, a batch job, on this folder. And at the end of the process, will tell you what are the categories of those documents? So if there are documents about storms, about the stock market, about Australia, about World Series, or anything like that, it will automatically detect those topics and create a catalog of topics against documents. And then you can start working with those documents. You can start searching those documents. You can start using this catalog in a very, very easy way. Just think about the documents you've been storing for the last 10, 15, 20 years. What do you know about them? Do you remember what's in those documents? Do you have access to all of them? So this is one way to take a huge pile of information and convert it into knowledge. And once again, the usage of this is super simple. This example would take an S3 bucket, which is our storage, run Comprehend on top of these buckets, and extract sentiment. We're using the detect sentiment. It will extract sentiment out of this bucket, out of the documents inside the bucket. And I would like to do another demo. This time, we're going to do it really live and really online. Once again, you can find this demo in my GitHub. And in this case, I want to run Comprehend on RSS text. 
So what I'm doing here is basically taking an RSS feed from in this example from Stack Overflow for everything that is tagged with Amazon Web Services and taking the titles from this RSS feed and want to detect a sentiment for each title. I didn't check it, so I don't know what, what's there right now because it's fully dynamic and it changes by the hour. But as you can see, I'm running now and passing all the titles inside this RSS feed. Let's see if we have something negative or something interesting to look at. Let's go back. OK, unfortunately, everything is neutral. But I can take, for example, one of them, like this one. And it was called to detect sentiment on this sentence, S3 plus CloudFront plus Route 53, HTTPS issue. The key phrases here are S3, CloudFront, and Route 53. The score is neutral, and you can see each one of the positive is less than 1%, negative is less than 1%, neutral is 99%, and mixed is less than 1%. And I can actually use this and create an automated system by something like that. If I want my support team to get an automated email for every negative post on this website and send it to my team with the key phrases and the link to the post, I can run the script once an hour, scan it, and see if I'm getting something interesting there. Let's try this on another side. Maybe we'll get something interesting. So this was Stack Overflow. I should have you read it. Let's see if we have something on Reddit. Reddit to AWS that is not, yeah, we have negative. OK, we'll scroll through it in a second. So we have one mix, by the way. Performance insight are great, but can't split by DB or schema. Fine, this is mixed. As you can see, key phrases, performance insights. So I have the topic of this specific uh, post. Let's scroll to the negative. Let's see what's there. I hope it's not too embarrassing. This is the cost of doing live demos. OK, problem removing freelancers from account. Classic support case, right? I have problem removing a customer problem removing freelancer from account. The key, uh, the key phrase in this case are problem and freelancer. I would add account as well, but uh, we can figure it out. As you can see, this is the score we got. It's negative by .88, which meaning 88%. Yeah, it's a problem. He has a problem removing accounts, so this should be negative. I can mail it directly to my support team. They can, back, can get back to the customer and solve this issue or anything like that. And once again, this is super imp uh, simple to implement. Most of the code here is dealing with getting the RSS feed, parsing it, and displaying it nicely on the screen. The part I'm doing the comprehend is three lines of code. And this is how you add language capabilities to your code in three lines. Once again, you're more than welcome to get into my GitHub and get this code and play with it, uh, run it on your RSS feed, or anything like that. So that was, that was Comprehend. And I want to talk about the last service, and this is Amazon Lex. And Amazon Lex allow you to create chatbots. It allow you to create chatbots in a very easy way. And you can probably guess that it's a close relative of Alexa. Okay? The engine behind Lex is very similar to what we're running with Alexa. And it will allow you to create bots. Why do we really care about bots today? Because we see a, really, a real movement in terms of moving into voice-enabled and text-enabled interfaces. We started ages ago with punch cards and memory registers and moved on into pointers and slides and touch screens. And this is how our, our uh, user interface evolved. And today, we're talking about the, the third generation, and this is the conversational interfaces. And conversational interfaces, including products like Alexa, including all the chats you're using. And Lex actually allow you to create those interfaces. Lex can support both chat and voice. And you can integrate it into any AWS service, get information out of there, display to customers. I'm going to show you some examples. And just an example of how do you book an hotel with a chatbot. So 
to be able to book an hotel with a chatbot, you, you need to provide the chatbot some information. You need to provide information like, where do, where do I want to go, the city, the check-in date and the check-out date. You might want to add some additional information like location, more, more accurate location, uh, hotel number of stars and network or something like that. But these three are enough to create an hotel order. And in this case, what I would like to create with Lex is basically a flow when somebody is asking me to book an hotel in NYC, Lex will take this sound and parse it and will get the parts of the sound like book, hotel, in NYC. This is the automatic speech recognition. It will understand by natural language understand, uh, understanding that we are talking about hotel booking and my destination is New York City. This is coming from the first sentence. It will actually store this information until it will fill all the missing slots, all the information needed to create this booking. It might ask me again uh, so for some additional information, like where do I want to go, when do I want to go, check-in time, check-out time. And eventually, when everything is filled up, like when this entire table, what is called the slots, all of them are filled with information, we will go to the next stage, which is the fulfillment. In some cases, I will ask for confirmation, like this one. Can I go ahead and uh, with the booking? The customer will, will have to confirm it by, by saying yes, no, maybe, whatever. And then I will have to trigger some logic that will go and actually do the booking. And in this case, I'm triggering a Lambda function that is calling an external service to book my hotel. I'm going to get a response from this external service saying yes, the hotel was booked, and I can send this response, this confirmation, back to the customer. Your hotel is booked November 30. I convert this text into, um, with Amazon Poly into sound and actually play it back to the user with sound. And this is how I, how I close the loop. And we see a lot of use cases. People are using chatbots and Lex. And a lot of customers are doing that. And you can look at some informational bots that will extract information for customers. We see a lot of uh, implementation with real applications, like build something that people can do. It can be on mobile, like booking hotels, or booking flights, or checking status, and uh, things like that. Uh, enterprise productivity bots connecting to your CRM and to your, your ERP, and doing marketing and stuff like that, fully automated. And <coughs> uh, connection between IoT and bots. And if you would like to hear more about IoT and how do we connect the world uh, with devices, you can come to my talk tomorrow at 3 PM. I'm going to talk a bit about AWS IoT, but we see it a lot on wearables, appliances, smartwatches, so on and so forth. And I just want to give you one more example and use a chatbot, but not use it in an interface that includes my voice or a keyboard, but using it with a phone call. So we have a service called Amazon Connect. Amazon Connect is basically a service that allows you to create your call center in the cloud. And I created my call center. And if I'm going to call this call center, Yes. Give me one second. So I'm going to call this call center. This is the number, by the way. You're more than welcome to call it as well. Hi, and thanks for calling. Stay tuned while I check for next session of Boaz Cinnamon. Next session for Boaz Cinnamon is IoT from cloud to edge and AMP. Back again on November 8th at 1500 hours in Web Summit, Lisbon. Thanks okay. for using the demo. OK, Goodbye. so this demo is basically checking for my next session. And you can call this number anytime and get the information about my next session. It can be here or anywhere else in the world. But it's a very simple implementation. So if we go back to the slides, what we have here is a customer calling Amazon Connect. This is the number. As I said, you're more than welcome to call this number. People on Twitch, you're welcome to do it as well. And Amazon Connect will go and trigger an AWS Lambda function, the serverless function. This function will go and read information in DynamoDB. This database has all the information about my upcoming events with name of the event, time, date, location. And eventually, this Lambda function will get this information from the database, send it to Amazon Poly. It will convert into voice. And Amazon Connect will send it back to the customer. Next session for Boaz Zinnemann is. And as I said, you're more than welcome to call this number anytime if you want to catch me on another talk. 
As I said, tomorrow, 3 p.m., I'm going to be back here on stage. And before we, before we finish the session and go to some questions, I want to do another demo. But I want to start with this. How many of you are familiar with Bubblefish? OK, so I read this book, uh, The Hijacker Guide to the Galaxy, many years ago. And I remember this concept of the bubble fish and actually play with uh, some startups that tried to create something similar many, many years ago. And the idea is very, very simple. The bubble fish is a device you put in your ear, and you can speak in any language you want. And if the person on the, you're speaking to has the same device, he will hear you in his own language, OK? A universal translator. And in theory, today, with the services we provide with AWS AI services, we can create bubble fish very, very easily. So we can have a person speaking in English, sending this information into transcribe, transcribing this voice into text in English, translating it into Spanish with Amazon Translate, and playing it with Amazon Poly, whatever we got in Spanish. And this is your bubble fish from English to Spanish. So I did not create a bubble fish because it needs to be a, a device, and you need to put it in your ear. But I created something else that we can all play with. And this is called the bubble chat, OK? If you go and scan this URL, or just go to chat.boaz.cloud, people on Twitch are more than welcome to join us as well. You're basically going to get an interface that it's a bubble chat. I'll give you two more seconds to scan the, the QR code. People outside are welcome to join as well. OK, let's see. So bubble chat. OK, so this is my bubble chat. Oh, we have N saying hi, oi. Uh, this is the bubble chat. And basically, I can write in the languages supported in this chat. You're going to, to kill my interface. I have a translation box here. I can select my output language. I don't need to provide the input language. It'll do it automatically. But I'm, I can select my output language. I can write in any language I want. And all of you are going to get the text I'm writing here in English on your devices in the language you just selected. So in this case, hi and welcome to my Web Summit chat. I'm going to send it to all of you. And hopefully, if everything worked well, you're going to get a message from Boaz in the language you selected. And there are a lot of people on this chat. So I I'm, I'm hope you're seeing that. But here is an implementation of a bubble chat using very, very simple services. And I want to tell you the story behind the bubble chat while you're still chatting. You can go on. That's OK. Uh, so the story of the bubble chat is very, very simple. A, a colleague of mine named Danilo wrote a chat a year ago based on AWS IoT. You're probably going to ask yourself, what has AWS IoT to do with chats? The answer is nothing. But AWS IoT allow you to create a very simple application that has a, a very simple support for web sockets. And WebSockets is a great technology to create applications that people can interact between each other. And I'm using AWS IoT. I'm actually using Danilo's AWS IoT chat as the base for this application. All I had to do during the last weekend when preparing the demo for this session is to add on top of this uh, the layer of translation. And this is super simple. Because all I was doing is using AWS Translate. And each time I'm getting a message into this application, I'm sending it and translating it automatically. Nice that some people are using it for free promotion. That's good as well. As you can see, there might be some translation error. People are, 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 are selecting languages, language pairs that are not supported. But in theory, it's working pretty good, right? How does it work on your phones? Like, can you understand the chat that is going on in your, in your original language? Say yes, no, maybe. Cool, right? OK, so let me show you how it works behind the scenes. Feel free to keep talking. It has automatic deletion, so 24 hours later, this is going to be completely delete. Uh, so no history over here. But uh, let me show you how this thing works. So basically, bubble chat, as I told you, is based on AWS IoT. The only reason there is AWS IoT here is because it's a great interface to do web sockets and a very simple one. Then each time there is a message coming into AWS IoT, we're going to send it to AWS Lambda, it will trigger some code that will write this message into the database. OK? And this is basically my history. And I can load messages when somebody new is coming to the chat from the history. And now what I'm getting, the response I'm getting is basically the, the original message. And it can be in English. It can be in any language. 
but I want the end user, the one that is actually using the chat, to get it into his own language. And in this case, what I do, I'm sending this text into Amazon Translate because I don't have to specify the, the source language. I don't need to use it. So basically, I'm letting Amazon Translate to detect the language automatically. And at the end of the day, I'm basically sending the response and displaying it with very basic and very simple JavaScript code inside your chat. And this is how you create a bubble chat. OK? So enjoy it if you need it. Uh, this is going to be available for some time. So this is the bubble chat. And now, basically, it's your turn. If you have any questions you would like to ask me at this stage, I'll be more than happy to answer them. There is a mic over here. If there is somebody in the front and there is another mic at the back, any questions? You're still chatting, right? You want to ask the questions on the chat? Any questions over here? There's another guy with a mic. Going once, going twice. Maybe they, want to ask, they don't want to ask them in English, and, but I don't have this bubble chat thingy yet. Oh, there's a question over there. Over there? Can you raise your hand? Hi. Um, the Translate service, will it uh, be able to support one day uh, custom uh, models, custom machine learning models? Custom dictionaries? Yeah, so. Or custom languages? Yeah, let's. Uh, no, not custom languages. Let's imagine that you have your own, um, let's say, uh, specific yeah. uh, areas, like in medicine, like mechanical areas. So this is called custom dictionaries? Exactly. So yeah. you, exactly. You want custom dictionaries with custom logic, right? Yeah, so Translate does not support that. Uh, I think Comprehend supports it already. You can add custom dictionaries to Comprehend. Translate right now does not support it, but we're constantly working to improve our services and constantly listening to our customers. So if this is something you really think is needed, and I think that the same way it's needed in Comprehend, it's probably going to bring some value to Translate as well. Let's talk and see what we can do about it. Any more questions? OK, so we still have a full packed agenda here today and tomorrow. So you're more than welcome to join us for additional sessions, as I said, I'm going to talk tomorrow about IoT at 3 p.m. If you did not scan your badge, please do that. We're going to send you all the presentation from the workshops and $200 credit to AWS. And just as a last piece, if you want to talk to my chatbot and let me know what do you think about this session, you're more than welcome to talk with my Lex chatbot on Facebook. You can scan this code or just go to me to m.me slash boas.zinnemann.aws and let me know what do you think about this specific session or any other session I've been doing. So this is done by implementing a chatbot with Amazon Lex. Thank you very much for coming.